Tesla acquired Maxwell Technologies back in 2019, primarily for their revolutionary uh, dry electrode manufacturing technology. However, while Maxwell had proven out the dry process at a small scale, in their effort to mass produce 4680 batteries with this dry electrode process, Tesla has faced a number of manufacturing hurdles and progress has been slower than expected. In quite a few of my past videos, I have highlighted many of these manufacturing issues that Tesla has been encountering with their 4680 production processes. However, beyond those manufacturing issues, as I'm going to discuss in this video, Tesla also discovered a performance issue that was caused by a crucial component of the dry electrode manufacturing process. And this crucial component is the polymer binder, which apparently when it comes in contact with lithium ions at higher voltages, it breaks down and can lead to a reduction in cell performance or potentially outright battery cell failure. Thankfully though, this recently published Tesla patent application details their clever solution to this problem. I'm John and this is CleanerWatt. By using a dry electrode manufacturing process, Tesla is able to eliminate the drying ovens and toxic solvents from the battery manufacturing lines. This dry process involves mixing active electrode materials with a polymer binder to form a dry powder that is then laminated onto an electrode foil using heated calendaring rolls. The primary material that is used as a binder in Tesla's dry electrode manufacturing process is PTFE, which is an extremely durable and heat resistant polymer often used to provide a nonstick coating on cookware and is also known by the brand name Teflon. Unfortunately though, as Tesla described in this patent application entitled Compositions and Methods for Passivation of Electrode Binders, at elevated voltages and in the presence of lithium ions, this PTFE binder can have a tendency to decompose, which leads to a reduction in battery cell performance and or complete battery failure, which is of course an extremely serious problem. Here's how this problem is described in this Tesla patent application. Fluorinated binders, and in particular polytetrafluoroethylene or uh, PTFE, are binders commonly used in electrodes. Such binders enable the manufacturing of self-standing films without the aid of a solvent. It has been found that under some modes of operation of energy storage devices, such as at elevated voltages, electrochemical reactions of the electrode binder may occur, which can lead to decomposition of the binder. When it comes to what the decomposition of the binder actually causes and what that leads to in a battery, near the beginning of this application, the end result of this problem is summarized in this way. At higher operating voltage, the electrode binders within the electrode films of energy storage devices may undergo degradation processes that result in a reduction in performance or in outright cell failure. Now, of course, outright cell failure, that's pretty self-explanatory, but when it comes to what Tesla means by a reduction in performance uh, when it comes to these battery cells, this performance degradation includes, among other things, reduced storage capacity and increased resistance. Now, as you can see, so far what we've talked about is kind of a broader view and just kind of a basic view of what's going on here and what this problem is. Um, but this patent application goes on to provide a few more details about this problem and describes the belief that the decomposition of this PTFE binder may occur in the presence of lithium ions so obviously in a lithium ion battery, this is a problem. And when it comes to the effect of elevated voltages, which I mentioned earlier on, um, this patent application goes on to state, quote, for example, under elevated voltages, a fluorinated electrode binder may decompose to form fluoride salts, for example, lithium fluoride. Now, obviously it's a negative thing for your binder to start decomposing and turning into fluoride salts. And when it comes to this elevated voltage, you may already know this, but when you charge up a lithium ion battery, as it reaches um, a full state of charge or a complete 100% state of charge, um, a lithium ion battery, the voltage of that battery will go up. So anytime you have a battery 100% charged, it has a higher uh, voltage than when that battery is completely discharged. And so um, obviously in the operation of a battery at elevated voltages, 
this would start happening. So this is a major problem, not only in the presence of lithium ions, but at elevated voltages. So in a normal operation of a battery, this problem is going to come up. This patent application goes on to describe in further detail some details about the decomposition of this binder um, and it's written quote this fluorinated binder degradation can cause chemical and physical changes in the binder these changes can affect the structural integrity of the electrode such as the electrode film due to for example the reduced binding abilities of the binder when it comes to how this specifically leads to capacity loss in lithium-ion batteries quote this degradation can also cause the active materials in the electrode to lose or reduce electrical and or ionic contact. Additionally, the decomposition reaction can lead to loss of lithium ions from the electrode, reducing the energy or capacity of the energy storage device. Thus, the overall performance of the device may be reduced. Now, PTFE is a crucial part of Tesla's dry electrode manufacturing process. So this potentially lays out a very big issue. However, Tesla does have a very clever solution to this problem. And here's how it's described, quote, it is believed that coating PTFE binder particles with a substance that is not conductive of lithium ions, as described herein, may reduce or prevent degradation of the PTFE. Generally, the coating material is an ionically insulating material wherein the coating material blocks ions in the electrolyte from making ionic contact with the binder material. Preferably, the coating covers all or substantially all of the surface of the binder particles such that contact between the binder particles and the electrolyte is reduced or substantially eliminated. However, even coating some of the surface of the binder particles may provide benefit. Coating this PTFE binder with an ionic insulating material is an interesting approach to solving this problem and it apparently is a very effective one. Now, when it comes to the specific materials that Tesla um, describes in this patent application that actually act as this insulating material, uh, this application goes on to describe, quote, the coating material can comprise a carbon material, for example, carbon black, conductive carbon, graphene containing carbon, graphite, and combinations thereof. Now you're probably already familiar with graphene and graphite, especially graphite because that's commonly used in the anodes of lithium ion batteries. However, when it comes to carbon black or conductive carbon, those are not as commonly spoken about. According to Wikipedia, quote, carbon black is a material produced by the incomplete combustion of coal and coal tar, vegetable matter, or petroleum products. And when it comes to carbon black's usage in lithium ion batteries or conductive carbon's use in lithium ion batteries, I came across this article from OrionCarbons.com, which states, quote, Conductive carbon black is an essential additive in modern lithium ion batteries. It is used as an additive in small dosages in the cathode, forming a 3D conductive network to ensure that the non-conductive active material, and they give here examples, lithium, nickel, manganese, cobalt oxide, are electrically connected with each other and the current collector. So this is just another potential usage of a common lithium ion battery material. Beyond the carbon-based coatings, this application goes on, quote, in still further embodiments, the coating material can comprise a ductile metal. The ductile metal can be, for example, copper, tin, or antimony. Now, one interesting thing about patent applications and patents is many times they list a lot of different variations um, of their technology to make sure that they're protected or that it protects maybe a further change in the future. And in this manner, this patent application also describes, quote, in some embodiments, the coating material does not include any anode active materials. In further embodiments, the coating material does not include graphite. However, despite this statement about uh, non-active materials being used and potentially these metallic elements that I previously mentioned, despite that, it is clear that preferably, this coating would be made with conductive carbon. Hopefully from what is described in this patent application, this means that Tesla's 4680 batteries will have a great track record when it comes to longevity. Um, the Panasonic made 2170 and 18650 batteries that Tesla has used in their vehicles over the years do have an excellent track record 
for longevity, and hopefully the 4680 batteries will as well. For example, in Tesla's 2022 impact report, with the Model S and X, which have Panasonic made 18650 batteries, Tesla states here that, quote, even after 200,000 miles of usage, our batteries lose just 12% of their capacity on average. Beyond the Model S and X, when it comes to battery retention for the Model 3 and Model Y, if you look at this chart from tessie.com forward slash stats, you can see that the battery retention for Tesla's Model 3 and Model Y is also quite strong. Hopefully as time goes on, we'll get great reports for the longevity of Tesla's 4680 batteries as well. But from the limited amount of data that I do have right now, it looks like battery capacity retention for Tesla's 4680 batteries will be good. For this data, I reached out to Tessie and they graciously sent me this graph showing that so far, and once again, this is with a limited set of data, um, but so far, the 4680 battery packs are only expected to lose somewhere around 5% of their capacity after 50,000 miles or so. And when you compare this to Tessie's data for the rest of Tesla's vehicles as a whole, this is very similar to what is expected from these other vehicles. If you do own a Tesla, I definitely encourage you to go and check out the Tessie phone app, which allows you to track a number of your vehicle's metrics, including battery data. Do let me know what you think about all this in the comments section below. I'd love to hear from you. And also I'd like to say once again, thank you to all of those of you who support me through Patreon. Your support makes a big difference and really does help make these videos possible. If you'd like to find out more about the Patreon community I've set up, I'll put a link to that in the video description below. Thank you so much.